Hi everyone, and welcome to a new video dedicated to building statistical applications in R. This time we will take a look at image processing. We will work with a few images shot under different lighting conditions, and we will construct statistical models in R to distinguish between the different lighting states. We will also check how these models perform on unlabeled images, and how accurately they classify new examples based on known training data. Let's first look at how images are represented in R. For the purpose of this video, we will only work with grayscale images, so we will not worry about different color channels. An image is then simply a grid of pixels, whose grayscale values can be stored as integers in a regular matrix. Let's look at the following 10x10 matrix, which represents a 10x10 pixel image. So we have an all-zero matrix except for two rows and two columns that are non-zero. We can plot this matrix in R via the built-in image function. This function will treat each number as the light intensity for that given pixel, where higher values represent more light. This is how we can think of an image simply as a numeric matrix, which can be used in statistical analyses. To simplify our work further, we can convert the matrix into a vector. Let's look at a slightly more complex image. To load it in R and extract the underlying data matrix, we will use the magic library. We can now load the image. And R tells us that this file is 454 pixels in width and 322 pixels in height. We can then extract the vector of numbers that encodes this image. The length of this vector is exactly the same as the total number of pixels in the image. Since we now have access to this data vector, we have full control over the image and can make any changes we wish to the pixels. The magic library also has some built-in image processing functions. We can create a negative, or apply a filter, or change the orientation of this image. Now, for our main application, we will analyze a collection of pictures from the Yale Face Database, which contains photos of individual faces under different lighting conditions. You can find a link to the database in the video description below. Our photos will have either central lighting, or lighting from the right, or lighting from the left. We want to check whether a statistical model can detect the difference between these lighting conditions. But first, how do we load the numerical data that encodes these faces into R? Well, we can build a loop that goes through all images, which in my case are stored in a folder called Lighting. We can then load each image into R using the image read function, extract the corresponding data vector, and finally store this vector in the face data matrix object. Each row in this matrix corresponds to one image. And the row names record the exact identity of the picture, including the lighting state. We thus have 43 images, with over 77,000 pixels for each image. To identify patterns in this data, we can first run a principal component analysis, also called PCA. We can think of our images as points in a space where each pixel represents a different dimension of the data. And this is useful because PCA is a dimensionality reduction method that projects each data point onto a lower dimensional space while also preserving as much of the data's variation as possible. And working with fewer dimensions will help us detect patterns easier. Each dot here represents one image, and we find that PCA recovered some broad structure in our data. But how does it correspond to the lighting conditions? We can first recall which images are lit centrally, or from the left or right. And we can then color code the points in our PCA space accordingly. Orange shows the right-lit images, blue the center lighting, and green the left lighting. We see that the images cluster fairly well according to their lighting, 
So even though we have not told the algorithm anything about this feature, it was able to pick up relevant patterns based solely on a numerical representation of our images. Now let's go a step further. Imagine you see this pattern, but you only know the lighting state labels for some of the images. Based on this partial information, how well can you predict the labels for all the other images? We will answer this question by hiding the labels of individual images and then using a machine learning model to try and re-identify these labels. This approach is called leave one out cross-validation. By comparing the predicted with the true labels, we can get some insight into the performance of our model. Let's start by assembling all the relevant data. Our data matrix contains the principal component values of all 43 images, as well as a label of 0, 1 or 2 that records the true lighting state. Let's use the caret package for the statistical work, which allows us to easily apply many different algorithms to our data and also test their predictive performance. We'll start with a random forest model. Random forests are used for classification or regression and rely on constructing multiple decision trees to obtain some useful theoretical properties. We see that a random forest model was run and that leave one out cross validation was used to test the accuracy of the model. So the lighting state for each picture was in turn hidden from the model and then re-predicted based on all other observations, and the accuracy of these predictions was recorded. This explains why R reports sample sizes of 42 images, despite having 43 total images to work with. For predictors we have our 43 principal components. And the three classes are 0 for central light, 1 for left light, and 2 for right light. This method has one parameter, which corresponds to the number of randomly sampled variables used internally to fit the random forest model. The caret package runs through a few values of this parameter to find a good choice. Finally, we get an accuracy metric for the different values of the parameter. We can also look at the confusion matrix, which compares the true labels with the ones predicted by the best performing random forest model. This looks good, most predicted labels match the true ones, and the fraction of errors is fairly low for all lighting states. And that's about it for today. We have used both an unsupervised approach, PCA, as well as a supervised model, the random forest, and found that lighting states can be detected fairly well. This was a quick introduction to image processing and basic analysis in R, and this is a very broad topic. With larger image datasets we can begin to detect finer patterns and train more powerful models. See you all in the next video for more machine learning applications in R.